The 1971 Pro Street Cuda by Johan, coming up next on Monster Hobbies, What's in the Box? What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hello once again, Pro Streeters and race fans. Welcome back to another great Monster Hobbies unboxing video. My name is Trevor Slescu and I'm going to be your host as we take a look at the 1971 Pro Street Cuda by Johan. And actually, this kit originally started off as the 1971 Sockin Martin drag racing car. The molds were the same, but later on, this is sort of the end of Johan's run, they decided to cash in on the Pro Street trend that was happening in like the 90s. So they just reboxed this kit. It's exactly the same molds and everything inside, as we will see. Just things are a little bit different. And if you like these great videos and you're brand new to this channel, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with all your friends and family because every week I make brand new videos. So I don't want you to miss out on those. And I've got a big collection going backwards too in my playlists and everything else of videos that I made in the past because it's my goal to try to chronicle all these great model car kits. Now, you may see this and you may say, hey, you own Monster Hobbies, I should be able to buy this today. Well. That may not be the case, because this is out of my own collection, some of the model kits I borrow from friends and whatever. However, if you want to see what we do have for sale right now, don't forget to check us out at www.monster-hobbies.ca. Sign up for our newsletter as well, because I'm doing great promo codes and discounts and all kinds of cool things, but you only get those if you are a member of our website. Well, without further ado, let's go down to the showroom and see what's in the box. Now we go all the way back to the street where we've got our 1971 Pro Street Cuda by Johan. This model kit came out in 1992. However, this kit actually came out as a Sock and Martin version back in the 70s. It's just been reissued and reboxed a billion times. And this is sort of the final time for Johan in its last years. So there we've got our Cuda from the rear with our big motor in there and everything else looking all nice and neat. It's got the 426 cubic inch V8 Hemi. The end of the box looks like the front. And then here we've got the lowdown on all our bits. So this detail kit features a 426 cubic inch Hemi, dual, uh, sorry, dual distributors, high-rise intake manifold, four tube headers, decal sheet with contemporary striping designs, custom mag wheels, roll bar, optional side windows, detailed chassis and interior, molded in high impact styrene, chrome clear and red clear parts. This is an unassembled Plastic model kit in 125th scale. Uh, yeah, all that stuff. So there you go for the side of the box. And of course the side looks like the end. Now this is a flip box style, much like Ravel had, only this is better because they glued the sides in, whereas Ravel just had those little tab things. There's our instruction sheet, and it says, I bought this at Cameo Stamp and Coin, Maple Ridge, British Columbia, with a $5 off certificate. $13.95, down, knocked off five bucks, made it an $8.95 model kit. August 6, 1994. So I was still in British Columbia back then. Geez, that's a long time ago. And I think I used to enter model contests, so I think this certificate, this must have been like part of something that I won back then. So we'll just take this out of the way. Unfortunately, the glass is not in the bag and you can see some wear marks in it. Then we've got our Chrome, which again was not in the bag. Hmm. Looks like I'm missing two wheels out of there. Okay, and then we've got our white components, our interior bucket, our hood, our body. And then we've got our undercarriage here. Here's our tires. Oh, there's some of my wheels. Okay, thank goodness they're not lost. <laughs> Woo, I'm almost going to lose that oil pan there, so I better be careful. Let's just put that over there. 
and then more weight components and tail lamps and tires and whatnot. So I'm just going to clear all this out of the way and then we'll look at those instructions. Has this ever happened to you? Oh, hey honey, I just came back from the hobby shop. You wouldn't believe what they had. They had this van here that's just exactly the same as how my dad's van was, but it's a Coca-Cola one and I want to build it and man, I can't wait to see what this looks like. And then you went downstairs to your workbench. All right, let's see what's in here. Oh man, this is the worst thing I ever got. Or maybe it went like this. Oh man, this is the best model kit I ever could have got. If you're looking for great model car unboxing review videos, don't forget to subscribe to us over at the Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage found on YouTube and I'll leave the link in the description below. Here's our instruction sheet for our CUDA Pro Street. And this is the typical Johan one page instruction sheet, which folds all the way out like this, which is quite typical for Johan, of course. So what we have here, if we just zoom in, is we've got our first panel, which is the engine assembly. Can you dig it? So of course, this being the former Sock and Martin Plymouth Cuda, this actually has the full-on race components in it. Johan always made wonderful race motors. Um, the other ones are the Ford Maverick and Mercury Comet. I do believe those are also 71. Unfortunately, I don't have any of those. <laughs> well, I do, but I built them. But anyway, there's the carburetor tops, our four-barrel carburetors, the carburetor spacer plates, the manifold riser block, the intake manifold, our cylinder heads, our valve covers with the oil filler cap molded separately that you pop in, the engine blocks left and right also have the transmission off the back, oil pan glues up underneath there, there we've got the dual distributors with the housings for them, I, I do believe, uh, the distributor base, so you got caps, distributor and the base, three parts. Glues on the front engine cover with the oil filter, the fan belt, and the fan. Far out. The next panel shows our interior assembly. And if you looked at the interior bucket, you may have thought it was quite a ripoff that there was no interior panels in it. However, keep in mind, again, this is the Sock and Martin car just redressed. So those interior panels are actually smooth. We've got a three-piece shifter, which includes the base, the reverse lever, and the shifter handle. The reverse lever was separate, so you wouldn't actually, when you were racing, throw it in reverse and blow the motor apart. We've got two front bucket seats, a separate steering column, the instrument panel, the tachometer with a tack face, and a steering wheel. And then we've got our three-piece roll bar, and which would be roll bar and the rear supports. Our fourth panel shows our chassis assembly going together. And of course, our assembled engine will drop into place. We've got three piece wheels with the keystone type wheels. In the front, the front tires, the wheel back. Now look at this, we've got, what is this, a transformer. We've got the base, the ignition transformers, three pieces all gluing together into our, um, our frame here. Actually, yeah, our chassis, because it's unibody. The gas tank is separate, glues in there. We've got these nice rear springs with shock absorbers and the brackets. Got a four-piece differential in the back here. The rear axle cover, the two halves, and the front housing. We've got our drive shaft. We have the front suspension, which is our arms and our torsion bars and the rear support, which glue in there. And these nice noodle headers, which are three pieces, left and right hand side. And again, there's our rear mags. Now, there should be metal axles. Yeah, two axles, front and back. Uh, not sure if they're metal or plastic. We'll have to see once we look at those parts. But overall, I mean, that's amazing stuff. And our final assembly here is, of course, our body assembly. We have a hood scoop going onto this nice hood. The um, grills pop in from the back, which is nice. Uh, 
compared to the monogram kits where this is all one piece although the monogram kits they have their good merits as well front roll pan our front bumper there's our radiator wall now remember it says paint flat black that's only on this side on the other side would be the body color which if you're doing this as Sock and Martin, I do believe that's all white inside there. They painted this black so that if you look through the grills, you would not see white paint or body color paint, but you would actually, it would black out, it would disappear. There's our radiator with both upper and lower radiator hoses. Our glass is all separate components. It's not got the bars across linking them. There's our firewall, which should be nice and smooth because again, it's a drag racing thing. So you don't want the heater motors and all the rest. Master cylinder gluing on because you can't go unless you stop. License plates and then the tail lights as one piece, the rear roll pan and our rear bumper. And that completes a look at our Johan 71 CUDA Pro Street instructions. Back in July 2013, High River experienced a massive flood. Although many things were damaged and destroyed in the High River flood, we were able to save some of our products. Wait until you see what I have inside the Studebaker. In this video, we will restore one of them as best we can. I'm just going to open up the door here. These all got hit in the High River flood. And I managed to rescue as many as I could. Oh wow, is this car ever dirty? Now there's only one solution to fixing those car wheels, and that of course is repaint. Wow, that car looks so much better now. Now to keep on trucking, we're gonna get the skinny lowdown on this great body here by of course Johan. Now this one is a bit smoother than the monogram kits, but again, keep in mind it's for racing, so there might have been a bunch of things removed. There's the paddle door handles sitting there for our body. There are no side marker lamps, which again would have possibly been filled in by Sock and Martin. Not too sure of all the detail and stuff that they did on their car. If any of you guys know out there, let us know in the comments down below. There are mold marks in here. Of course, this being a model kit probably built in 71 by Johan. So you can fill those in, sand them down, scrape them with your number 16 hobby blade. There are the two double fins here for mounting that firewall perfectly in place. So that's always nice. The front end, of course, has the body detail molded all in place. It's a little bit curved in here, which lines up with that chrome piece, as you can see. And then, of course, looking across the back, this is sort of interesting because you've got it smooth in here, sort of the same way Monogram did theirs, although Monogram does have the CUDA script in here. But again, racing, script is heavy, pull it off. But here, if you notice all these little bits and pieces hanging down, that of course is to lock your interior and your bumpers and stuff on, which is basically how AMT did it in the good years. You know, the 90s. Now, there is some flash on here, but again, keep in mind that this kit has been pumped out millions of times. Flash along the top of the, or seam lines along the top of the fenders. But again, I mean, considering the vintage of this thing and the fact that it's a Johan kit, it's amazing. Next up, we'll take a look at our interior bucket. And as you can see, there's some little pins in here which would line up with little pins inside the body. It's very smooth in here. There's no back seat. It's been removed. There are some notches, buenos notches, for the roll bar to fit in. The side panel trim is very, very light. But that is okay. There's no carpeting in here or anything. Because again, keep in mind, this is from the Suck and Martin race car. Some mold marks, which you can easily get rid of with your number 16 hobby blade. And because there's no carpet in here, it's nice and smooth. You don't need to worry about scraping off a flat dead spot in your carpeting. Underneath, of course, no mold marks. <laughs> 
Why couldn't I use the underneath technology on the top? But anyway, there's our interior bucket looking nice and groovy. Next up, we have our chassis. And as you can see on this side, it's pretty smooth. There are some long pins that stick up here, which again will be used under the body. Uh, very smooth. In fact, extremely smooth. <laughs> But again, it's a racing car, so you don't really need all that stuff under there. There is a little bit of something here. I'm not sure if you're meant to sand that off or not. Um, this is very much like the Johan SC Rambler. It's got these big beams that come up here that hold your axle in place, but then the separate springs and little retainers for your shock absorbers. They're du doubled, which is quite nice. Uh, under hood, nothing under hood, except a couple of mold marks. These are easy to get with a file because it's nice and flat in here. But overall, I mean, for what it's worth, this thing, again, being a race undercarriage, looks pretty good. Here's the rest of our white plastic parts trees. And as you can see, we've got three of them. And then we've got our hood and the wheel backs that I popped out um, sometime previous in my life. <laughs> So here we have our engine block and components. There's our front and rear pans, the bucket seats, which are one piece, which are really nice, plus the roll bars and the license plate there. And then we've got our radiator and our fan, our dashboard, our wheel backs, wheel backs, our rad support, and our very smooth race ready firewall. You know, these might have been painted aluminum, or might have been aluminum as well. It's hard to say. There's our radiator hoses, and they do look like correct flex hoses. We'll see that in a minute. There's our scoop for our hood. There's our exhaust manifolds. All of them are headers with the collectors. There's our axles. Now, they're plastic. I think that's also a license plate. Okay, confusion. <laughs> There's our rear springs, our gas tank, and our front suspension, as well as the differential and the drive shaft. Okay, uh, the first thing I, I want to do is just grab this hood here, which I'll bring up to the camera. Underneath, it's all smooth. Don't worry about a fire mat. There are some mold marks in here which need to be removed. The reason why I'm doing the hood like this is because I also want to bring the body up here, just show you how it fits in. Now you notice there's no gaps in this thing, or no like major gaps. There is a gap, of course you got to open the hood, but it's very tight in there. So again, really nice. There are four hood pins on this thing. So you could display it down, or I've seen some guys put little posts in and actually display the model with the hood up, you know? Anyway, just gonna move that to the side. And then we will take a look at, well, I'll get rid of these two because they're loose. Loose like a goose. Okay, move that out of the way. Move that out of the way. And let's bring up this amazing engine. I always love the Johan motors. I'm going to lose that oil pan. If I do, you've seen it here first, folks. There's the oil filter. Let's get our pointy stick here. So there's the oil filter. There's our cylinder heads and our engine. These big bumps in here. So that means that their location points for those cylinder heads. There's our transmission off the back. It's missing the shift linkages, but all the brackets are there. So if you ever want to bend some wire, there's our front engine cover, our uh, pulley and belt. Now keep in mind, this is racing, so there's no alternators or anything else on there. Intake high-rise manifold. Look at those long pins. There we go. I'm trying to move this without dropping that oil pan. Long pins, which go up through these carburetors, mounting holes and everything. Awesome stuff. I mean, Johan was really good. There's our dual distributors there. Mounting brackets for the shock absorbers. There's our pans. Look at the detailing on those seats. Those are really nice. It's just too bad Johan is not in business anymore. Yeah, that's a license plate. Nothing on it. There's a couple of funny funky looking things under there but that's okay um yeah there, look at our cylinder heads you can see the pistons in there as well very cool 
don't fall off oil pan. <laughs> okay. Ugh, balancing act. You're going to see a little bit of this down at the bottom here. Right there. I'm, I'm not going to try to move that because of that oil pan. Okay, there's our um, suspension components and all the rest of this good goody goodness here. There's our fuel cell, typical racing style one. Uh, shocks. Oh, this just says rear and front. It's not a license plate thing. It's just telling me where the axles go. Oh, because this one's got a notch in it. Buenos notches. Okay. There's our headers there. The differential. It looks like a real differential plate if you were to pull all the covers and everything off. That's really cool from uh, Johan. Up underneath. Uh, should be okay. <laughs> a bit of flash on that spring. But that's easily removed. And then here we have the final parts tree. There's our radiator there. Which is nice that it's a separate bit. Our fan, which would be a fiberglass one for lightweight. There's our instrument panel, which has been looks like it's been stripped down for racing. See what I mean? The wheel backs. And our mounts, which are very smooth for the radiator and our firewall, of course. Now look at those hoses. You can actually see the flex in there, which is really nice. The ribs. And then our hood scoop. Underneath, there's a nice mold mark, but Again, get rid of those with your number 16 hobby blade. Get rid of the mold marks on there and on the back of the firewall. Make it all smooth and it should be nice. And like I said, I will have to take a look at images of this car. But I do believe this is just one big piece of aluminum uh, for making it lightweight on the drag strip. So again, we'll move this off to the side here. And carefully, don't go off oil pan. So there's our white plastic components. Whoop! And now we'll get into the chrome. Next we get into our chrome components here with our Pro Street 71 Plymouth. And as you can see, we've got our grill here with the headlights. And this is curved so you can put some black wash into here. And then it'll come through nice on all those little port openings. There's our carburetor heads here. Which you can see they got the four ports in them. So two four barrels. There's our tachometer with the separate face that pops in. Our three-piece shifter for the floor. There's our keystone drag mag wheels. As well as our front and rear bumpers. Then we've got our valve covers here. The rear cover for our differential. Amazing steering wheel and these gigantic, gigantic carburetors. So bringing this up to the camera, you can see those. Look at those things. Dual quad king carburetors. There's our tops. Little rings. No air filters. A bit of flash around here, but you can easily remove that. Actually, flash-wise, this is not bad. I know the... Uh, Toward the end of Johan's lifespan, there was some really horrendous flash issues. There was alignment issues and everything. Because a lot of these molds were being punched from like 1960 whatever the heck, all the way up to 1992 or 3. I think it was 93 was the last year for Johan Seville. Or was it 95? Maybe not that late. But overall, really awesome stuff. The other two mags we'll take a look at with our tires. So again, awesome work by Johan. Next up, we have our clear components. And here's our front and rear window, as well as our side windows. And as you can see, the window is actually a full piece, this being the front. So uh, basically, you can't get any dust inside your car, which is nice. And then here's our rear tail lamp, molded as a one gigantic long piece. But on this side you can see the little squares that go into the body. And they are actually kinked up just to relieve that. So again, very, very nice work by Johan. Next up we get our tires for our Johan 71 Plymouth Pro Street. And now this is one thing that's really cool about these Johan tires. These ones here are from another kit. I've got lots. <laughs> Don't worry. Uh, 
Now, as you can see here, we've got the drag slicks in the rear and we've got our front tires up here. I'll just move these guys out of the way for a sec. Now, what you can see here is these are Firestone Drag 500 tires, which are quite unique for the era. You got them front and back, and then you got these inserts to go in the back of these tall drag tires. Now, there's a bit of a fake out here. Dun -dun -dun -dun. If you turn them over, it now actually says Goodyear Polyglass GTs on the back. And on these little pieces, they also say Goodyear. So how's that for uh, <laughs> licensing? You got Firestone on one side, Goodyear on the other. Now you can, of course, put your wheels in either way. If you like Goodyear and you're a loyal Goodyear customer, you can put them that way. Or if you like Firestone, you can have the Firestone on the outsides. So that was one cool thing about these Johan tires. Now I got a question for you guys. If you've built these kits, now this is the old timer builders that have been around and actually got a bunch of these back in the day when they first came out. You know what I'm saying. Did you mount these as Firestone or Goodyear? Because on mine, I like to have them Firestone because that seems to be the most solid part of the back tire, seeing as these are two pieces, right? Uh, oh, and you also notice that these ones are a little softer, I think, than these. Maybe that's why I did it. But I sanded the treads on these with my sanding tool just to smooth them out. But I, I don't know, I find personally, if you're putting the wheel through this side, you just got that little skip of rubber right there, eh? I guess you could crazy glue around the rubber here and hold it in place. But to me, I think this is a little bit weak. You know what I mean? Whereas mounting it on the Firestone side, I think there's more strength to the tire to prevent the uh, Keystone mag wheels from popping out. But let me know in the comments down below which you preferred, and if you did have that trouble of the wheel, like, separating kind of funny. Now, unfortunately, I don't know what happened to the original Johan instruction sheet. Sorry. <laughs> now, unfortunately, I don't know what happened to the original Johan inst... Doing it again. Now, unfortunately, I don't know what happened to the original Johan decal sheet. However, I knew this was a Sock and Martin Plymouth. So what I did is I phoned up Fred Katie back in the day, back in 94, and I ordered these Sock and Martin Plymouth reproduction decals for this car because I wanted it to be the Sock and Martin version, which it is, really, in all intents and purposes. The mold never changed. They just dumped the decal sheet. So here, of course, you can see this nice bright red, the proper blue on the stripes, the Pepsi logo, the Dodge logo here, Sock and Martin Plymouth. Now, what you do is you put the silver down first, and then you put this one over the top. That's how Fred Katie did it. However, I think there might be a problem here because in the High River Flood, uh, this model kit didn't get affected, but when they, they had to... Uh, clean the basement. They had to wash it out. And of course the water got in the concrete and it's always been damp sort of in the basement ever since because the water of course is trying to escape out of this concrete seven years later. And I think what happened is a bit of that dampness got in the box just like a mist. And I think it might have screwed these decals up. But I'm not sure on that. We'll have to see. Anyway, the uh, Fred Caddy stuff is nice. Um, should go on here quite well, provided these aren't wrecked. <laughs> uh, you can see some Edelbrock stuff in here, the Champion spark plugs. Now, I might replace these with AMT decals, just because Fred Cady had a... He couldn't print white and then stuff on top, so you've got like a white circle, and then the stuff on top, and you have to slide them together. And that, that can be a bit complicated. However, what I really want here is the red stripes and the blue stripes. Of course, I guess I could mask all this if worse comes to worse. This is going to be the hard part, getting the Sock and Martin and the Plymouth, but we'll see how it all goes. Anyway, those are your aftermarket Johan decals. And that completes our look at our 1971 Pro Street Cuda by Johan. 
And if you've built this kit in the past, let us know how you liked it. Did you build it as the Pro Street with this funky decal on here? Or did you build it as the Sock and Martin model much earlier? If you did, we'd love to see the pictures. I'll leave it in our Facebook at the link down below in the description. Well, I sure hope you enjoyed that great model kit unboxing video. And if you want to pick up some amazing model cars, not necessarily this one, it's mine. <laughs> Don't forget to check us out at www.monster-hobbies.ca in the model car section where you get to see all our great cool model kits. And also subscribe to our newsletter so that when I do flyers and whatnot, you are the first ones to get some great discounts. And if you love these amazing videos, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. Click the notification bell down there so that when I make a new video, you are the first ones to see it. And until next time, race fans and pro streeters, have a good one.